morning. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and for allowing me to present some data about RealSR. What is RealSR? Uh, that is. RealSAR is the result of a collaborative work between SAR and the Spanish Society of Rheumatology. It was developed on the basis of RealSAR, that is Spain, and was adapted for our country in 2014. It's a multicenter cross-sectional registry that was carried out by 106 researchers from 67 centers, I'm sorry for the Spanglish, in our country. And we were able to include 1,610 lupus adult patients. And well, these results were published, recently published in lupus. This is for the Sharon. Recently, uh, this month. Well, go on. We could describe the most frequent lupus patient in our country that was uh, as in always, in, in every place, the, they are female, the age of the diagnosis was 20 age, that is, they are young patients at diagnosis. Most of them had arthritis, cutaneous disease, hematological and renal disease. 47% of the patients had renal disease. Anti-DNA antibodies in 66% of the patients, and one third had anti-SM antibodies. We analyzed the ethnic origin according to Gladell definitions, and there were 44% of the patient Caucasian, 44% mestizos, 8% Amerindian, and 1.2% Afro-Latin American patients. When the most frequent patients that were Caucasian or mestizo were compared, it resulted that um, mestizo had more frequently male patients, 10%, low socioeconomic status, status, inadequate medical coverage, and less years of edu education. And regarding delay in diagnosis, fortunately, it was the same. And when clinical manifestations were compared between the two groups, there were no difference, they were more or less equal, but uh, Caucasian patients had more frequently and significantly more lymphadenopathy and renal phenomenon. The rest, as I said, were equal. And finally, higher damage index was associated to mestizo patients. Regarding mortality, it was registered in 44 patients that was 2.7% of the group. And when they were compared with the live patients, the difference or the main difference were more slightly for any time for patients who were deceased, more slick, more Charlson, and more CAT index. In conclusion, this study represents the largest number of adult patients with lupus studied in our country, and Caucasian patients were differentiated by having renal phenomenons, polyadenopathy more frequently, while patients of Metis origin had higher damage indexes. Rosana Quintana published in our magazine that a study that was the evaluated patients who did not respond to standard immunosuppressive treatments and the possibility of receiving belimumab as an activity modifying treatment. And she classified the patients under remission, low disease activity, not control. That was with or without immunosuppressives. Um, patients under remission were, according to Rosanna classification, SLEDI equal to zero without treatment with corticosteroids, that was 23% of the patients. Low disease activity, SLEDI equal or less than four without corticosteroids, 12% and not controlled patients, as led by more than four, and any corticosteroid dose, 63.8% of the patients. When those patients, those without, oh, where does it go? It is not possible for me. <laughs> not controlled patients who are controlled with the rest, well, with patients under remission or low disease activity, it results that not controlled patients were younger, 
were uh, more frequently mestizos, had more hospitalization for lupus, more serious infections, more disease duration, sledi, slick antibodies, and more need of uh, immunosuppressive treatments. The analysis identifies a profile of non-responders and potential candidates for a treatment with different mechanism of action than conventional immunosuppressant. In this case, although it was intended as a potential indication of elimumab, it results applicable to other possible therapeutic targets. And now I will present three abstracts of um, works that are going to be presented here. We are uh, squeezing Relesar. This is antifofalipid syndrome, secondary to lupus, and its relationship with renal failure. Well, 11% uh, of the patients had APS associated. Patients with lupus and APS were older, had longer lupus duration, and more frequent manifestations related to vascular compromise, comorbidities, and damage, as well as treatment with rituximab. Renal failure presented in 2.3% of the cases and defined as need of dialysis or renal transplant was associated to comorbidities, renal flare, and treatment with cyclophosphamide, but not with the presence of APLs, antibodies, or APS. This is other work that was evaluation of non-criterion manifestations of APS in patients with lupus according to the antibody profile. Those are the three groups that were analyzed, lupus with APS, lupus with antibodies, and lupus without antifofolipid antibodies. When the three groups were compared, it resulted that lupus with antifofolipid syndrome or the antibodies had more frequently hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute neuropathy. Other work is the relationship of, of pregnancy and acral damage. They were analyzed all women, and among them, those who had at least one pregnancy. Pregnancy, and it resulted that here it is: women, women who had at least one pregnancy had higher damage, and damage was higher when complicated pregnancies were compared with normal pregnancies. There was no relationship between the number of pregnancies and acral damage. Finally, the RELESAR registry, we could say that we have exposed and satisfied needs on which we must work. We have learned that mestizo patients are associated to poor socioeconomic status and more damage. Damage was associated to mortality. Non-criteria IPS, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, depression and neuropathy were those. We were able to work together, was what is not little, and we are looking now forward to the success of the new register, Relsar Prospective. So now I can say thank you for your attention, and I'd like to introduce to you all the investigators who work and did a big and wonderful work for this uh, register. That's all. Thank you.